So my name is Carl Johnson, co-founder of Lumayo and Visualite. And um, I am born and raised in Iceland, but I've been in Southern California for the last 19 years. Uh, I have, um, it, yeah, it's an honor to be here today and, and be kind of the opening act for this, this event. So uh, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for coming. And uh, I've filed over 70 patents and I have four short patent stories to tell you uh, about my journey with patents. Uh, the first story is about the smart light bulb. So back in 2003, I was uh, working on my master thesis at the IT University in Copenhagen. Uh, and uh, my master thesis was about the future of the connected home. I was imagining how you could control everything with phone and voice in the future very early on. And um, the, the state of the art phone at the time was a Nokia 3650, had the first Bluetooth radio. And I uh, had a little Bluetooth dongle on my PC to kind of simulate lights going on and off. So uh, it was a fun project. That was the practical implementation. And then uh, I didn't touch that for about five to six years. And uh, uh, around 2008, I find myself in the US uh, starting a, a smart home company with um, some of my former colleagues, where I was able to materialize my vision for the smart home or, and the smart bulb. And uh, LEDs were still uh, too early at the time. They, were, they turned really hot, and uh, they looked like spaceships. So, uh, the, uh, yeah, so the, 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 the compact fluorescent was the first one we did. We never commercialized that. But in 2010, we had our first commercial uh, solution for the smart bulb available. We were super excited, launched it in a store. It was in Home Depot first. And uh, it didn't sell. Nobody bought it. Almost all the nerds really liked it. But uh, uh, 2010 was simply too early. The, the App Store came out 2009, and people were still grasping the idea about just downloading apps on their phones. And, and it was just yeah, way too early. But we got the attention from Philips. They invited us to their uh, lighting headquarters in Shanghai. And uh, we had uh, a lot of interaction with them. And uh, they launched Signify. Uh, well, they changed the name to Signify later. But they launched the Philips Hue 2012 and ended up buying 20 of my patents from, from the startup company. So uh, yeah, so the lessons learned, you've got to have timing in marketing. Uh, the, the, the good idea is not, not enough. Um, and uh, the next story I have is my first patent I filed personally and paid out of pocket myself in 2014. My wife came to me and said, like, uh, oh, have you heard the news? Hackers are hacking the web cameras and, uh, you know, spying on people, recording them and extorting them and stuff. There was a big discussion about that in the news in the US. So I started brainstorming with um, a better solution than putting a sticker on my camera. Uh, I found out that paper clips got stuck to my MacBook. And uh, I love the aesthetics of Apple products, and I didn't want to ruin it with a little sticker. So I came up with this sleeve called Spy Shutter. A very simple product, you snap it on and you can slide it back and forth. And uh, as, as, as easy as it sounds, it was quite an effort to get that into production. Had to, I had to become a material expert in steel and find the right thickness and had to be magnetic, not bend easily. Had to find powder coating to not scrap the screen and all, all this stuff. So it, it, it was much more work than I thought. And, uh, but the product sold well. And uh, before I knew it, companies in Silicon Valley were asking me to make custom branded products with their logo that they would hand out to their employees, both Facebook, uh, Netflix, and, and a bunch of other companies. Um, I even did some for my, for my friends here at, uh, at Roof. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, this was becoming too, buck, too big to be, be, be a side company, so I had to kind of make a big decision. And, um, and uh, it was also not big enough to become my main job. I had a comfortable uh, corporate job at the time. But around to the same time, um, a gentleman called CJ, he came on uh, the American episode Shark Tank. You might know this from, from TV. And uh, he was presenting a similar idea. It was a paper clip, not a paper clip. It was a plastic clip uh, that was 3D printed. It got on the screen. Um, and he got funding, but he didn't have any patents. So before you knew it, there were, you could buy a 10-pack on Alibaba for a dollar and all that, right? So no protection. But he really liked the business and sale aspects of it. So he reached out to me and uh, asked if I could license the Spy Shutter product. And I asked him if, if he wants to buy it instead, because I really, this was not intended to be, be my main job. So he did that, and he's still maintaining it today. You can buy uh, Spy Shutter onto the iBlock name uh, on, on Amazon for the latest Macs. Uh, third story, this is my main job today. This is what I'm mostly excited about. And uh, I, I call this story the golden handcuffs. I'll, I'll mention why in a moment. But um, first, a little bit background. When the LED bulb came out, not the smart bulb, just the regular one, you probably all remember they were going to last 30 years, and it was very exciting. Uh, but anyone who's 
bought a bulb in Ikea or a retail store, they know that they start failing much sooner than that. And the reason is um, the LED chip actually lasts 30 years, but the AC-DC driver, and I'm not talking about the rock band, uh, it's from alternate current to, to direct current uh, converter in the bulb, that's what fails. And it's also the biggest e-waste in a light bulb, and you know, decreases the longevity by one-tenth of the potential. So I, I wanted to solve this. In the, in the professional world, the drivers that are here in the ceiling, they last maybe seven to eight years, uh, but the LEDs still last much longer than that. Uh, another problem is, um, or related problem, it's not just for LED light bulbs, but it's also for everything we use. As you, when we have our laptop, we have this big brick we plug in the wall. We don't need that brick. We, the, everything we, 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 we use runs on DC power. So I wanted to kind of transform, or at least have a cornerstone in, in, in transforming the world to DC. And the last problem, this is more centric to US, in commercial buildings in the, in the United States, you have to have metal conduit for every electrical wire. And this is really wasteful from a carbon perspective. It's also very expensive. A Costco store, uh, as an example, uses $250,000 on conduit alone. It's also very time consuming to install. So I wanted to solve this at the same time. Data cables, they've been around for a while. This is the most manufactured cable in the world. Uh, ca category five or category six cables. They're considered low voltage and they can freely run in cable trays in the ceiling. You don't need any conduit. And uh, starting 2003, Cisco started using those for IP telephones and then for access points and other things. And the, the current has been increasing uh, quite a bit in the standard. So I wanted to use that for lighting. And um, around 2019, I founded a new company called Sotspor, means carbon footprint in Icelandic, and uh, started tinkering with uh, the idea of powering light bulbs directly without the driver and having the switch, the ethernet switch, dim them. Um, I filed of, uh, three patents on this, and um, 2022, I got the, the patents granted, and uh, I, I came up with this solution called XPOE, or extended PoE, which has 40% more power than the standard, uh, much less cost, um, uh, it was DC powered, so you wouldn't need the dimmer, and as a bonus, it was also backwards compatible with standard PoE, meaning that you could unplug your light, put an IP telephone, it would just work, had networking and everything. And we're also, buildings are moving to a, a smart world, so having sensors in the light to detect the occupancy and, 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 and room temperature and, and all this stuff, it starts to make sense in the whole IoT domain. Um, so I decided to take Sotspor uh, uh, and break the golden handcuffs of my, my daytime job and, uh, and jump in the deep pool with Sotspor. And uh, 2022 emerged with a later stage startup that I knew pretty well called Amaris, and we changed the name to Lumayo. And as with many relationships, nine months later, we had our first product. Uh, and uh, first it was an eight-port switch, then 24-port, and uh, we've been shipping since November last year. And uh, the, the first uh, pilot project we had was, um, it was um, a house in Hollywood Hills. The, the Hollywood sign is just right above this. This is designed by the Icelandic architects Erla and Trekwe, who have Minark in Santa Monica. And uh, they gave me free hands to do whatever I want in this building. And all the lighting there, including the design, is, is, um, is uh, by us in, in this company, and it's, um, it's fully DC powered. There's no um, AC or high, high voltage power in the ceiling. And uh, now we're getting more interest. We have some big jobs on the roadmap um, in LAX airport and a lot in India. This is the new World Trade Center in New Delhi. That's on the, the lower left. So that was the third story. The last story is about, I call it labor of love, because it was never intended to be uh, for profit. Uh, this was just uh, fueling my desire to play with lights and colors. And um, a little bit backwards story there. Um, we, we create custom LED chips with custom color wavelengths. And um, to, to, give you, to make you understand it a little bit better, so most people know the audio range. We, have, we, we can hear from 50 hertz to, to 20 kilohertz. And as we get older, the 20 kilohertz kind of starts degrading, uh, and, and you have less and less of the top frequency. Our eyes, however, they have like three different cones. They, they're in the short, medium, and long range, and they, they resonate to the red, green, and blue spectrum, as, as, as many people know. Problem with LEDs is that the spectrum is extremely narrow, so it's just a little spike in the, in, in the spectrum. So if we were listening to music, 
it would be like having a seven-band equalizer, and you can only move three of the knobs. You know, you would never get good sound quality. Um, so the first chip we did was, um, we call it the Vibrance chip. It has the four additional channels to, to allow you for seven-channel color mixing. So extremely niche, not for the, com the mainstream market. This was mainly for artists and lighting designers doing restaurant and special projects. And with that, you can create some amazing colors you can't even imagine with, with, with standard red, green, blue um, uh, chips. And um, lesson learned there a little bit is um, we didn't file a patent because we, we thought it was so niche, nobody would want to copy it. Uh, but then we got um, this um, large project with, uh, with an artist, uh, Steve McQueen, who's also a movie director, won the Oscar for uh, some movies. And, and he's, um, uh, he ordered 12 kilometers of our strip. Uh, it was a total, total surprise to us. This was last year. That um, exhibition just opened this Saturday. I just, just came from New York to, to, to attend that. Uh, and uh, so now we started filing patents. We have these um, uh, other, strip, other chips in development that simulate the twilight part of the sunset and other things. So, and uh, another project here, this is, um, this is with a lighting designer called Wes Lane. He did this uh, cancer ribbon. Uh, on the front lot of uh, Gilead Medical in, uh, in Silicon Valley. They, they make a lot of medicine for, um, uh, for cancer and AIDS. So um, they, they paid for the sculpture. And uh, this is the, the typical project that our strips will be used for. And here's, um, I just squeezed it in last minute. This is, the, this is from last Saturday. We were at uh, Steve McQueen's um, opening event in New York. Um, and uh, yeah, I highly encourage you to see it. It's, um, just across the street from Stewart Airport, where Play flies to New York, which uh, is quite a coincidence. And, um, and um, yeah, it, it's right on the way of going to, to New York with Play. Uh, so that, that's those my four stories. And I just want to end it with one slide, which I think is important. Uh, when I find patents, I, I usually go with the path one above. Uh, I, I typically file. On average, probably one professional patent a month, and maybe two or three out of those actually become patents. But it's a great way to protect your invention why it's in the, the incubator stage and you're trying to find money for it or see if it works or developing a prototype. So I would highly encourage, you can, you can actually file this yourself uh, for about $100, but with a patent consultant, you can do it for a little bit, less, a little bit more, five, five to 600. So it's, it's not expensive to get started with patents. Uh, so yeah, that's it, thank you.